everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First, um, you know, look, I've been a sinner my whole life. Um, I worked on Wall Street for 30 years, so I've been probably deeper in sin than almost everyone in this room. Um, I always had some faith that was in, out, wavering, I was raised Catholic. My kids go to Catholic school, they've gone to Catholic education their whole life, but, you know, I had a music teacher in high school that always stays with me. His name was Mr. Christensen, okay, and I went to Monsignor Farrell, which is a Catholic school, but he wasn't a Catholic, he was a Christian, and they let him spew off some of his over-the-top Christianity, but um, it wasn't all Catholic, but this one thing never left me, and it was, he said, men, you know, Farrell's an old boys' school, he said, men, you cannot be Burger, Burger King Catholics, okay? A relationship with Christ and Jesus and the Lord is not a fast food relationship. You can't just pull up every so often and get a Whopper and a large fry and a Happy Meal and think that you're in a relationship with God. You can't be a Burger King Catholic and show up on Christmas, Easter, and walk around with ashes so that everyone thinks you're a Catholic. A relationship with God is like fine dining. You go that you go there and you sit down and you spend you break bread and you sit at the table and you have four or five courses and you're committed to that relationship. Amen. And remember this guys, he used to say when you go to Burger King, you pay first, and you get your food later. When you go for fine dining, there's a trust in that relationship that they will feed you, and you will pay when you're done. So I always remember that, and that's from 10th grade in high school, okay? And sometimes I'd go through times where my family or my friends and my loved ones and myself were going through it, and it was dark. And I would say, oh, this is where I got to talk to God. And I would go pray and I would go, you know, do some bogus confession because I thought that my Burger King attempt would work and bring me some favor. Um, and I walked with the devil many times. I know that. I've got successes in my life from doing things that I shouldn't have done if I was a great faithful man. So I feel like I've walked all sides of the street. And for whatever reason, God has blessed me to still be here. Amen. And Amen. During the quarantine, there were times where, you know, I'm divorced and I'm away from my kids. And there were times where, you know, everyone was very nervous. I was still out in public because I'm on the news and I was going into the city. And my kids and, and, and their mom didn't think they should be near me because they didn't want to spread. And I was literally in my house for a month alone. And I was so depressed. And I have all the material successes of life in my hands. I have everything. I have a beautiful house, I have a healthy family, I have any anything that I need godly, I can have materially. Um, but I was still depressed, I was still sad, I was still lost. And I started thinking to myself, well, you know what? Even though I may have screwed up this relationship with God for my whole life, I'm 52 years old, maybe this quarantine, as they say in some scripture, and I'm not a great reciter of scripture, I kind of read the stuff and put it into my own terms, but um, I'm poor, I'm poor. every hurdle is wrapped in a blessing, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, maybe this is the time for me to not start reading the Bible and becoming on the God Squad, but just reestablishing my own personal discussion, conversation, and relationship with the man upstairs, and I started to believe in it a little more, and another friend of mine said, hey, I know you're not like all into church and everything, but why don't you join a Zoom uh, church gathering, and you don't have to say anything, just listen. So I started listening to that, and I started to think more, and then I would scribble down some passages, and then I would go look them up, and I would read them, and I would start to think about how I put them into my own words and my own feelings, and, and I started to realize that all these years when people say the power of prayer and the strength of your faith and all this other stuff that not that every wish I ever had all of a sudden started coming through but I could feel a light and a, and a, and, and, and a spirit in me that I hadn't had probably ever Amen. and Amen. Um, I started thinking that whatever material things I have whatever gifts God gave me with my big mouth and my ability to get on TV and, and speak publicly and 
maybe this is what God wants me to do. He, want, he wants me to use the talents he gave me, not just to make money and, and make my family richer, and um, but enrich my community, enrich my fellow man, enrich my neighbor yeah. in a way that maybe other people can't. Maybe I just have one unique quality. And um, so I started getting involved here, and I never even knew these guys. I just knew that it's my community, and everybody in the community usually knows that something's going wrong. They're going to call Johnny T. He's going to get on a ladder or stand in the back of a pickup truck and start yelling and screaming, and then these people more, will more. feel something. So I started getting involved and seeing how I could help. And then we had a rally. I met Pastor Mike and I met Pastor Chris. I said, you know what? Why did I just meet these guys? And so it's all on the path where I'm going. And then when I start talking to them, I know you guys do doing masses outside and other places. And I said, well, why not here? And why not us? So I made my TV studio in there. Um, this is a house of worship as far as I'm concerned. And I'm going to do everything I can to make this better and better for you guys and for anyone else that wants to come. Um, hopefully I'm going to have you some good heat soon. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas, yes, someone here, but I want to make it better. I want to make it greater. Um, and it's not for us 20 people. It's certainly not for me anymore. I, I mean, uh, the, the joy I have um, is that God is blessing me, and he's given me power and energy that I never had before to see things differently, to take a different perspective, to take a different approach. And, um, you know, a couple weeks ago, I know the pastors mentioned that my family were going through some stuff. The mother of my kids was very ill. Um, she had surgery last week. Um, she, they said she'd be in the hospital for two or three days. They let her out the next day. And I just want to tell you guys, it's not just us. It's thousands of people, and wherever the Lord's light is, um, was on my family's behalf. She's home. She's cancer-free. And all that. Um, and lastly, I'll just say this. In the middle of me kind of having this, you know, I don't want to say born again or this or that, just a reawakening that I need to be a better person and confirm that I don't have a strong relationship with the man upstairs and all the angels with him. Um, you know, my mom's doing some clean outs of her house and all this other stuff. And last week, she says, you got to take this to your church. It was Danny's. It was my, my grandmother, she's been gone for quite some time. God bless her, Mary Elizabeth Pratt. But um, this, was her, this was her cross that she had on the side of her bed. And it's like 70 years old. And my mom said, you know what? You got to have this down at the church because this is right at the heart of your family and my grandmother went to church every day said a novena a rosary every other thing um so just the fact that even this little thing popped up in my life keeps telling me that i'm on the right path and i see all you guys individually you come by you talk to me you give me words of encouragement support all i can tell you is i appreciate that but the support is me watching you guys spread the word in the community, spread the word, make this a place of love and peace and joy when there's been so much tumult here. And um, I just want to say thank you all very much. For thank, you, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, John. Please keep coming. Please tell other people that they're welcome here. And if it gets bigger, I'll build a bigger boat if I have to. But, um, God bless you all, and thank you very much. God bless you, Johnny. Everybody lift their hands up and put them towards uh, John. We're going to pray for them. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for John Lord. Lord, we pray the blessings of Jesus Christ upon his life. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit of God. Touch the Lord from the top of his head, Lord, to the soles of his feet. God, we thank you for healing him. God, we pray, God, that you continue to bless him, Lord, for you made a way, Lord. You open his doors, oh God, uh, for this ministry, Lord God. And I pray, God, you continue to bless him, Lord God. Even like uh, uh, Solomon, Lord, he asked for wisdom, and the Lord says, I'll give you even more, Lord God. Because you didn't ask for riches and, and goods, he says, I'm still going to give you more of goods and stuff like that. But I thank you, Lord, for, for John, that he's opening his heart, Lord God, and opening the way. Continue to bless him, Lord God, and continue to use it for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.